Hi everyone, welcome. Today I want to talk a little bit about jealousy and how jealousy, the sin of jealousy, breeds to murder. So there are some people that think, well, jealousy is not that bad. You know, it's not adultery, it's not fornication, nobody's getting hurt. But that's a lie of the devil. Jealousy is actually a very big deal because jealousy always breeds to murder. And I'm going to give you guys some biblical examples of this. There's a lot of, of um, examples in the Bible on how... Uh, jealousy breeds to murder the first one i want to go over is the first one that we see in the word of god which is the one of cain and abel and this is found in the book of genesis chapter 4 verses 3 to 8 um and this is where both of adam and eve's sons cain and abel they bring an offering to god and the bible says that god accepts abel's offering but rejects cain's offering and cain gets upset and bitter and God has a conversation with Cain and says, Cain, if you don't, if you do what's right, wouldn't I accept your offering as well? So like God is telling Cain, like, it's not the end of the world. It's not about that I love Abel more. It's just about what he did that is acceptable before me. And if you do the same thing he did, I'm going to accept you too. But Cain, he doesn't, he's not having it. So instead, he decides to murder his brother. And we see this in the book of Genesis chapter 4 verses 3 through 8 another one where we see of siblings that plot murder because of jealousy is joseph's brothers the bible says that joseph's brothers were jealous of him because their father jacob loved him more and gave him a coat of many colors and not just this but joseph would have dreams that um the stars and the moon and the sun would would worship him would bow down before him and he expressed these dreams to his brothers and his father and many times we we're so excited about what god is doing in our lives that we are quick to express things and sometimes it's just the people we express it to they're not in a in a level of maturity where they're going to actually be happy for us instead it's going to cause damage in them so we have to be very careful when we're excited and stuff who we speak to who we're vulnerable with who we share secrets and, and stuff that are dear to our hearts with because many times these people they will not value it and they will they will actually they'll actually use it against against us so so this is we see this in in the book of genesis chapter 37 verses 1 through 11 that his brothers plot to kill him and thank god they don't because god had a plan for joseph's life and, and spirit him we also see in 1 Samuel chapter 19, 1 through 10, how King Saul, who at one point loved David and David here and David there, all of a sudden now becomes jealous of David because there is a song that the people begin to sing that says, Saul killed a thousand, but David has killed 10,000. And deep within his heart, King Saul knew, he perceived, very prophetic, right? He perceived that David would be the next king. And because of this, jealousy grew in his heart. Although King Saul was anointed by Prophet Samuel and at one point had been chosen by God, now this king has murder in his heart. The Bible even says that when he went to go look for David and Samuel and he wanted to kill David, that he goes into a prophetic atmosphere and he begins to prophesy. And you can think, well, how does someone that has murder in their heart and that is not right before God uh, prophesy? And this is because the Bible says that the gifts are irrevocable, irrevocable. So it's not about the gifts. That's why you cannot be impressed by the gifts. It's about the character and the fruit of the Spirit. The Bible says you, you know them by the fruit. So we see here how King Saul also, because of jealousy, uh, has in his heart to kill King David. And even though, even though King Saul was wrong before God, David had, I believe it was two opportunities to kill King Saul and did not do so and said he would not kill, he would not touch the Lord's anointed. So we see here David's heart. And this is in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 19, verses 1 through 10, um, about King Saul seeking to kill David. Now, another person that we see that because of jealousy, he, they want to kill him is Daniel. And Daniel, it says that these men conspired against Daniel because of how much envy they had against him. But they said they looked for some way to, to, to go against him and they couldn't find. So they said, the only way we're going to find something guilt to to make Daniel guilty is that we do something against his God. So because of this, they had to trick the king into making a new law, which would go against God's law to be able to kill Daniel. 
And the funny thing is that that which they conspired against Daniel to kill him, which for the lions, the lions to, to eat him, <laughs> the Bible says that God closed the lion's mouth. And instead, the accusers, those who plotted against him, received that punishment because the king said, let his accusers go to the lion's den. And the lions devoured them. We see how Jesus, when he walked on his earth, our savior, the main one, Jesus, when he walked on the earth, it says that the religious men, the Pharisees, these people envied him because he spoke with authority, because the winds obeyed him, because demons were cast out when he would cast them out. They actually left, they actually obeyed because he healed the sick, because he moved in the power of God. And because of this, instead of rejoicing, they hated and envied him and sought opportunities to kill him but the bible says it was not jesus's time so until it was jesus's time that's when the crucifixion happened okay so murder is breeded by jealousy and murder is not always physical murder murder is also when you speak bad about a person when you lie when you when you when you spread rumors about a person you are murdering that person's character you're killing that person's influence over a person that is murder and that would most times come before the physical murder so you have to be careful with what seeds you play with what seeds you're feeding when the enemy throws these seeds at you that's why we have to always put on the full armor of god that's why we always have to take our thoughts captive to the obedience of christ because we're all humans no one is exempt but the Bible says, resist the devil and he will flee from you. So we have to be careful to analyze what are we playing with? What are we thinking about? What thoughts are we feeding? Okay. So now also I want to hit up because this also has to do with um, when this happens, when we see, when God shows us that there's someone that is jealous or envious. Now, now there has to be a division and a separation. And, and God is not a God of division. I believe that. I believe God is a God of unity. But there are some instances in the Bible where we see that God is the author of separation. And I'll give you some examples of this too. In the book of Genesis chapter 21 verses 10 through 12, we see how Ishmael is mocking Isaac. And Isaac's mother tells her husband Abraham, get rid of your son Ishmael. And her husband becomes distressed and, and he goes before God and he's stressed out. And God tells him, do not be stressed, but listen to your wife. Because your son Ishmael will not have any part in Isaac's inheritance. I will bless him too because he's your son. But go ahead and listen to your wife. So God there is approving of this separation. Okay. We also see in the book of Genesis chapter 13 verse 6 through 8. Where the Bible itself says. But the land could not support them while they stayed together. And it's talking about Abraham and Lot. It says that there was a lot of quarreling going, going on between their people. And Abraham told Lot. We're family and this is not right. So let us split up and, and part ways. And that's exactly what they did. And God was also in the midst of this. So the Tower of Babel, when they were conspiring together in one accord, and it says that God came down and says, we're going to confuse them and bring forth another language. This is in the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verses 7 through 9. So there are many instances where we see when, when there's estancamiento, when when God wants his word to be spread and he sees that the, the people of God are just in one place and he's like, okay, no, something has to happen here. What happened when the persecution of the church? Now the people of God were spread throughout the whole world and preached amongst the whole world. You know, this usually happens like where, where Jesus, when he was, it says that when Jesus was crucified, um, his disciples were scattered. Why? Because in Zechariah chapter 13, verses seven, it says, strength the shepherd and the sheep will be scattered. And we see it all the time when something happens to a pastor, to a mentor, to someone. Usually everyone that is under that person is hurt, is wounded, leaves the church. It, 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 I mean, division, Some it's not the will of God, but many times God will use it. Because if God sees that there's jealousy or if God sees that there's something going on and he allows unity, then of course the person's going to, if you leave David in a place with Saul and Saul has jealousy against him and wants to kill him, what's eventually going to happen if they don't part ways? You know, so sometimes God to defend us, to care for us, to protect us, will show us things and will actually allow for there to be separation. So I wanted to share that with you guys. And I hope that this ministers to someone that you receive. Um, thanks for watching. God bless you and have a nice day.